Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Spear Center for the Fall 23 semester. I am your host, Nicholas Orozco. And I'm Christian Vieira. Football season is in full swing and there's an undeniable electricity in the air. The anticipation, the excitement, it's all here. But for the San Jose State Spartans, the season has begun with its fair share of challenges. Matt Weiner and Nate Canelau are here to give an in-depth look into San Jose's slow start. And like Nick said, slow start, 1-4 to begin the season. But Nate, what we're kind of going to discuss is, is SJSU a reflection of who they played? Or is just a team that's just going to struggle throughout the season? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you, you play two top 20 teams, you play a MAC champion, and you play Air Force who's undefeated. But obviously, you know, if you're a good team and if we're holding them to the standard that they put themselves in and being Mountain West champions, trying to build off the success they had the last three years, uh, they just haven't showed up. Uh, Oregon State was one of those examples where they really could have showed something against a team, uh, but they just they kind of just got ran over. And then Toledo, obviously, they, they had the lead third quarter, and then, you know, they, they lost that in, in, up into the fourth quarter. So, um, you know, it's a little bit of both. Obviously, the tough schedule doesn't help going 0-2, going 1-3. That, 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 that stuff doesn't really help. Uh, but like we kind of talked about, it's if you're a good team, those are moments where you got to overcome. What do you think, Matt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the most interesting part about this is that Air Force Toledo, obviously, you kind of stall in the second half, mm -hmm. especially offensively seven combined points in the second half against Air Force and then Toledo. I mean, I think we're starting to see what happens when you're missing Justin Lockhart, who right. entered the season as a preseason all-conference selection. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's part of it at all? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the second half numbers from just Cordero himself, they, they take a dip. And I think part of that is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that first half, a lot of scripted plays, a lot of things underneath makes things really easy for a quarterback like Cordero. But then when you get into the second half and you got to improvise, you got to kind of figure out, OK, let me just play the matchups game. They don't really have that guy. You know, we're still kind of, you know, Nick Nash had a really good start to the season, had a really good game against Toledo. Um, but then he, you know, it, it's still he's still not the physical guy, physical uh, athlete that Justin Lockhart is. And they, that's kind of what they're missing. Right. They're not they don't have that the deep threat, the, the guy who's six, three because lightning fast. They're kind of missing that right now um, as we head into the season, though. What do you think the outlook is for them? Like, what, how difficult is this season going to be? And what do they need to do if they really want to make this bowl game? Yeah, I mean, that's the tough part where we're at right now. It's just, what is this a reflection of? Because Air Force really provided such a brutal mm -hmm. ma matchup for them. Like, across the board for who they'll face for the rest of the year, I think Air Force will still be just their worst matchup. Mm -hmm. I mean, considering Air Force, we all know them, the triple option, I mean, they're the entry in the game. They're the only team nationwide who averages 300 rushing yards per yeah. game. And SJSU's front seven, this is young. This mm -hmm. is a young, fledgling core. And we're starting to miss some of those cornerstone guys of the last of that rebuild, like your Cade Halls and Junior mm -hmm. Fajocos, who are Mountain West Defensive Players of the Year. So matchup-wise, like, you could kind of tell that this was – the writing was on the wall – for this to not go well mm -hmm. and for SJC to allow 400 rushing yards right. that's a big I mean that's a big number and then give up 35 unanswered points right and you know it, it like like going forward it doesn't get right. any easier right like Boise State could still run the ball really well um, they have a good quarterback who could I think could challenge the, the Spartans defense and then you know going down the line and you got to play uh, San Diego State and Fresno State back-to-back -back weeks um, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be very interesting to see how this Spartan team responds um, but you know, in terms of just getting to, you know, getting past the, the easy part, the hard part of the schedule, um, do you think the, it's light ahead of, for, the, for the Spartans in that sense? Yeah, I mean, that's the difficult part where I'm just going to say it. Season's kind of on the line against Boise State mm -hmm. because that's just where you have to win that game because, okay, let's say you lose to Boise State, but you're also coming off a bye, and I know it's on the road, but you're coming off a bye. You should be well-rested. I mean, kind of got – short end of the stick with starting week zero. But yeah, so you're coming in well rested. You should be able to beat that game or win that game. Because if you don't beat Boise State, you'll have mm -hmm. to win five of your next six. And Fresno State, I mean, very well could be top of the mountain by the end of the season. And then we're also seeing Hawaii starting to surge mm -hmm. a little bit. And there's just these, and San Diego State's looking a lot better than they were. They looked pretty solid against Boise mm -hmm. State. That was a close game. That was right. a one possession loss. 
you have to beat Boise State because after that, the schedule gets way easier. Right. So you don't have to procrastinate, essentially. <laughs> exactly. Well, we'll see how the, how the rest of the season plays out. Hopefully this bye week kind of gives them some, some juice going into the, the latter half of the season. We'll kick it back to our anchors. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Let's hope the Spartans are able to turn their season around. Now we go to Titus Wilkinson with women's soccer. That's right. Titus is giving us a rundown of the team's performance against New Mexico. Hi, my name is Titus Wilkinson. I'm reporting in for the Spirit, and right behind me, we've got SJSU women's soccer tango, taking on New Mexico for the first conference match of the season. San Jose State's coming in with a 2 3 3 record, with Bella Flaccini absolutely on fire with five goals so far this season. We'll see if they can pull out a victory here. Right now, it's tied 0 0 at halftime. See how the second half plays out and if they can get a win. SJSU continued to press in the second half, but when unable to find the back of the net, as instead of the counterattack in the 54th minute, UNM would get a goal from their sophomore forward, Prezi Debbie, as she found the top right corner of the goal. With the Spartans on their back foot, they needed a goal from one of their big strikers, and they would get just that, as Kennedy Mayo would deliver in the 89th minute, tying the game up at one. They would continue to do battle until the end of the match, but were unable to break the tie as the game would end 1-1. UNM would end up outshooting the Spartans 17-15 with Vente Pernat making three saves in the match. What a back and forth game. Make sure to head over to the Spears website to stay up to date with Spartan soccer. Although starting off the season strong, SJSU women's volleyball has yet to clinch a conference win. Joining me in studio to discuss all things volleyball is the Spears Aikman Fang. All right, here I am with Aikman Fang joining me in the studio today. Thank you for coming in. It's a pleasure. All right, cool. All right, uh, the volleyball so far, you know, they, we, we have a hot, another hot start, but unfortunately dropping off the two comp, our first two conference opening games. What do you think about that so far? I mean, it should be noted that the San Jose State Spartans started 9-4 and four for the third straight season. Last season, they finished with a 21-9 and nine record, and the season before that, they finished 19-10. and 10. Unfortunately, it's Todd Cress's first season. Uh, they dealt with a lot of transfers, so there are there is a lot of obstacles, but so far they've done a good job handling all of that. And despite the first two conference losses to um, UNLV and San Diego State, I still believe in the Spartans. I still think they can make a run for the Mountain West Championship this season. So so now looking ahead of for the for the season so far and with and with these two matches coming up, what do you think what do you think these Spartans can do? I like her chances against Nevada. Uh, which is the uh, next match coming on Thursday. Last season, the Spartans defeated the Wolfpack 3-1. to one. And then on Saturday's match against Fresno State, the Spartans defeated them twice last season. They defeated them in four sets and then three sets. It just shows that the Spartans, despite having a new roster, they still can repeat the same, same success they had last season. And then with this, and with this season being Todd Kress's first season here at San Jose, being able to build this team and build up this motive, what do, you think that, what do you think that that means for the program as well? If Todd Kress can take the success the beach volleyball team had and sort of repeat that with the indoor volleyball team, I like our chances, especially in the Mountain West. Uh, I believe in Todd Kress. I believe in the assistant coaches like Melissa beatty Smoose. I believe in this current roster. I think they could go up, um, make a run in the Mountain West tournament. And of course, you mentioned as well last, last season that they made the championship but didn't fare too well in that. Do you think we have a chance to repeat that? It really depends on how well this team does in the regular season, considering that they were the second team or the second best team in the Mountain West during the regular season, and it allowed them to have easier matchups in the tournament. Thank you, Aikman. We look forward to the rest of the season. That is a wrap for us here at Spear Center. Be sure to follow at the Spear SJSU for all things SJSU sports related. For the Spear, I am Nicholas Orozco. And I'm Christian Vieira. Thank, Thank you, you and, and go Spartans. Spartans.